So that sh not only is that, but they have to live with this. And so um, there was a niche in church. So I went to church and I was looking for, I, I gravitated towards what I call the dirtbags. You know, the Those guys, you, people too. <laughs> the, the, you know, the guy, guys, the girl, girls, the ones who have seen and done some things and a little rough around the edges. They might drop a little cuss word every once in a while, but they'll be all right. You know? <laughs> Amy doesn't uh, know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the kind of people that I gravitated towards in church. Like I, I was like, you're my guy. You need to come and hang out with me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you know, I cuss a little bit. Great. No one cares. <laughs> I don't think Jesus yeah. cares. <laughs> just, just, you know, whenever your mom's around, let's not do that. Right. Uh, you know, but. Uh, there was a niche for those kind of guys. And so I realized that people were kind of skipping over that. And there was a need for someone to kind of bridge the gap. Yeah. And not only say, to tell these guys like, Hey, you're not being left out. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a podcast. It's not, I realize people listen to podcasts for different reasons. Some of it's educational. Some of it is different. Ours is just literally three guys just sitting around talking about, uh, life as a veteran, as a dad, as a business owner, and, you know, um, and just trying to navigate the faith and navigate regular life. Um, it's every denomination. We have people of every walk of faith to come and talk about it. But what I really like to do is talk to some of these guys that are like, have done some really crazy, like special agent type stuff. Yeah. And to try to figure out how you came home and just now rocking some khakis in a polo every day you know drinking starbucks and how you went literally from one end of the spectrum fallujah yeah so coming yeah. home it's a huge is, transition yeah, yeah it's a huge transition yeah. yeah so and then yeah no and we've talked about this before like you know you come home mm -hmm. you've done things and you've got to reconcile this thing that you did that's supposed to be good right right it's a good thing but it's yeah. not it doesn't feel good right yeah and, and even it like we deal with police police officers all the time and even when they have to you know, it's a good shot. Everything was right. They did everything right. Even when things are justified, it doesn't, it doesn't sit right mm -hmm. because you're a good person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the head and the heart are a million miles away from each other. And somewhere you've got to reconcile the two mm -hmm. because you're a whole person and a whole body. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be so hard. That's it's got to be so hard. It's tough. It's tough because now that I'm a dad and I've got uh, four beautiful daughters, like uh, the, what happens is, you know, of course, what's in the past is in the past and we can't change that. Um, and uh, some people say they don't have any regrets. I have a lot of regrets. And um, well, they say I, that because their heart has to survive. Yeah. Right? And I, I have no problem with those regrets. And I say, well, if it wasn't for, you know, that sucks. I shouldn't have done that. And I regret doing that. So the next time that comes up, let's not. not do that. Yes. That's <laughs> how we grow, right? So yeah. I'm like, hey. Uh, but when I look back and I look at my kids, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is, is really tough and we deal with it differently. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell you, and this is my personal opinion is that the way not to deal with it is self-medication, drugs and alcohol. And uh, unfortunately that does lead into suicide and suicidal thoughts. Well, you think that everybody thinks that's the hard way out, but it's not us. you know, it's, it's, it's they think it, it is, and it's really oh, easy. Yeah. It's a lot easier whether you coming back from the military or you just got divorced mm -hmm. or you've lost a parent to drink, right? right? Right. Like to pick up a glass of wine before you know you've drank all, because yep. it's a lot easier to like numb it than to really have to deal oh, with. Yeah. It's so much harder for you. The to, reality. Yeah. So you of know, the pain. you kind of, you, you learn to compartmentalize while you're in the military and while you're in combat and it's just a necessary part of the mission. So, you know, if you lose one guy, you have 11 others that you have to live for. Yeah. And that's easier there. When you come home and, um, I mean, not necessarily that they took them away from you, but you moved on. You're now out of the military. So all those guys are spread to the winds. Um, you don't have that support system mm -hmm. like you used to. So I encourage guys and girls, when you come home from the military and you take that uniform off, find and develop that network. And if you don't have one, call me go find my find me on facebook i don't care shoot me a message um i open my house every year for thanksgiving uh you're welcome i don't care bring bring your mom dad bring everybody bring the chihuahua i don't care uh my house i got four kids uh, my my, it's a circus my furniture's already tore up anyway yeah so uh but i encourage people to have that network because the, uh, once again, part of it was belonging to this organization, you know, being around these people who valued each other and, and um, lifted each other up. And if it's in a, in a church or if it's in a support group, if it's in a counseling session, if it's with a, with a bunch of um, 
uh, men and women that you uh, that you you know you have to do in life together. I think everybody's saying that nowadays. But um, <laughs> doing life, doing Word. life, it's, it's <laughs> tough. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. Yeah, that and uh, you know, uh, there's some motorcycle clubs as well. Uh, I, I have a good friend of mine who joined the war vets and uh, mm -hmm. combat vets and stuff like that, and they're doing good things too. And there is an outlet for it, and there is a place for you to release um, and be able to talk because um, a lot of times learning how to get over that barrier talking about what you did where you've been um with people who weren't there is is the toughest part but once you do man it feels so much better it feels good i think too i think anytime i've done a lot of like therapy group therapy mm -hmm. and stuff like that um you realize that other people's stories that there's this like thread mm -hmm. that ties you all together mm -hmm. and you know i've never been to fallujah but i know what it means i know what it feels like to have somebody's life in your hands mm -hmm and feel like you failed them. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that trauma that kind of binds us all. Yep. And so when you find when you find somebody that, that sees that their story and yours, yeah. there's something that's comforting about, there is. you know, there's some, when they say misery loves company, mm -hmm. well, so does trauma a little bit mm -hmm. because you realize that we're all kind of like- You're not alone. Yeah, and we're all rowing in the same boat, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to do life yeah, mm -hmm. and Definitely. make it and, and try to be a good person when it's all said and done. Yeah. Yeah. and not hurt anybody in the process yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely well do you mind if we put your contact in the um i'd love it the text please. section of this please when do. we post it out please do yeah thank you so much for sharing your story and for all the work george kite we love you <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for having me i appreciate it really we do love yeah. you yeah. yeah you're doing great work and we're just you so are. happy that you came to to tell everybody about yeah. it well i hope i hope that um you know, if we can save families, uh, families are a big deal. And, yeah. you know, um, being able to keep families together and to not only understand what causes some of this trauma and what uh, the after effects are, but that, um, you know, sometimes we inadvertently drag other people into it and that also hurts them and can destroy marriages. So, you know what I heard the other day? I heard someone say this and it resonated with me is that we all have this trauma that we carry with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, and a lot of things we, we can't control what happened to us, mm -hmm. but what we can control is how we deal with it. That's it. Right. And that's what we're responsible. That's where mm -hmm. our responsibility lies and how we deal with it, how we process it and how we go forward after it. Right. Absolutely. And you're helping people figure that out. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Trying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, great again thank you for joining folks um happy veterans day on friday hopefully this helps you to kind of place some more weight on what a veteran is and the kind of things struggles that they go through so hopefully you can help them we of course the lovely law firm really appreciate all of our veterans and all the work that you guys do we support you if there's anything that we can do to help let us know um you can find us anywhere that you consume your media we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can visit us online at justiceislovely.com. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining us. When life gets ugly, justice is